Radio broadcasting from the city to the world. www.cityworldradio.com She's got the tools with Jason. Yeah, what an intro. Chirp about it it is. Good evening, oh New York City. Greetings Are to the world. Gummy bears? Yep, you're right. tuning in oh to Chirp God, About It Live. Some. I am your host, Pat Saintville. We're broadcasting I'm on the City World man. Radio Network in the great city of Manhattan, folks. Great city. Uh, tonight we have a spectacular show for you, as usual. We have, again, uh, the return of Jules, Aqua Lady Jules, back in the house. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening. I love that. <laughs> and we also have the, the pleasure uh, of having uh, Jason Jason Flowers back on the show. He actually was uh, last week's caller. He called in, and today he's actually live on the show. So, uh, Jason, welcome. Thank you very much for Hello, being Jason. here. Hi, folks. It's an honor to be here again. Yeah, yeah. You had a lot to say, a lot of great things to say. In fact, I got some great uh, uh, responses about you. So I'm happy that you're you're back. Live at the station with us. Also, that great intro you just heard was by my uh, younger little brother, my uh, my partner here on the show, Mr. Ian Bamberg. Rock and roll, Pat. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. And we also have Jade who keeps things together here at the station. Thank you, Jade, for that. We love you. All right. Uh, with that, uh, we'll just cover some local topics, Ian, as we uh, uh, normally do. And then uh, we'll do our round of trips. What do you say? That sounds good to me. Yeah, baby. Also, folks, if you'd like to call in with your New York moments, thoughts, your opinions, or maybe if you have a question for uh, Jason, Jules, Patrick, or Ian, please call 646-690-2976. 646-690-2976. Please call in and chirp about it. We'd love to hear from you. Now, I'm just going to start out with uh, this uh, Jussie Smollett. Oh, yeah. uh, case now that uh, all 16 uh, charges has been dropped, from yep. what I understand today. Yep. Uh, you know what? I don't, I don't buy it. You know, I don't know what's up with that. But I think someone um, on the police force made a mistake, mm. and they had to drop everything. I think so. Because he, he probably had a great legal team backing him up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. I, I just, I'm just really shocked that all 16 counts. I mean, this guy is actually uh, really walking away from from what he allegedly, supposedly has done, which is this big lie. What do you think? What do you say about that, Jason? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not sure I could trust this guy. What what reason do we have to believe that you're innocent? Right. Well, that's that's the point. I've yet to see proof that you're innocent, and we re- we kind of really need that in this system. Yeah. Oh, is this sarcasm here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sensing a little sarcasm. You're, you're going to get some of that. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy lied. He lied about getting beaten up. Yeah, he, I mean, people. it's just a, it's a bad lie, you know. Yeah. It's, it's a mm. bad lie, you know, uh, to 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 claim that you were you were uh, attacked by two uh, uh, white uh, guys. Uh, then this noose was put around his neck. Um, I mean, it's just the story doesn't uh, you know it doesn't seem right to me. But whatever it is, I mean, he's off the you know he's just he's he's not being he's not going to be charged. Nope. Uh, with anything, so uh, Smollett gets to walk away. All right, it is what it is, but I'm not happy about that though, because I, I think you know when you Same. on something like this, you need to go. You need to be penalized. There's, there's some, there you should be, be some punished. form of punishment. Yeah, because you know what, someone else will, uh, I think, will uh, consider doing the same thing. When when you pretend to be a victim, you undermine the credibility of all victims, and Absolutely. that is very very wrong. Yeah, t- exactly. totally wrong. But exactly. uh, it is uh, it is what it is. All right, let's switch it over to the MTA because, of course, New York City. This is this happens to be a big, big issue. Uh, There's is a headline. You know, I love to read headlines, Jason and Jules. Uh, so this headline says uh, uh, wheeling and stealing, and what it is is that, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Transit President uh, Andy Byford is looking to uh, crack down on uh, these fare evaders uh, on the bus. I mean, you know, uh, according oh. to him, last year the uh, MTA. Uh, lost an, uh, an estimated uh, 128 million in revenue from uh, fare evaders and people not fair, uh, on people the bus pay on the on the bus alone. Not Pat, I've seen subway. so many people get on the bus, talk to the driver because they know, and the then driver. they let them on. Yeah, it's like you know, I don't have like I have money. Just give me a minute, then sit down and sit down, and then the bus driver just leaves uh, yep. leave them alone. So he, what he's what he's uh, 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 recommending is that they uh, they have more uh, cops, more 
police officers on the bus to enforce this uh, crackdown. Uh, in a way, I um, uh, I agree with Andy because, you know, uh, I'm, I don't agree with the MTA raising, jacking up the rates. In fact, it's going up uh, in April, April 21st. You know, the, uh, the fares are going up saying, again. Yeah. Um, that's redonkulous. Redonkulous. Yes, redonkulous. it is redonkulous. Repeat after me. Redonkulous. What? Yeah, there's ridiculous, and then there's redonkulous. Redonk. In, in the interest of fairness, um, let's consider the, the bus driver's position for just a moment. Sure. Um, some uh, somebody gets on their bus. They uh, aren't paying. They have no intention of paying. Right. So the bus driver can either make a make a deal of this and uh, get them off the bus. But if they do that, they're going to uh, hold up everybody else's trip and sure. make a lot of people unhappy. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, they work hard. They don't necessarily need that. Right. So, I mean, you, you can't – it's not entirely fair to make it solely their responsibility. Correct, yeah. So, patrolling officers, that's a good thing, I think. Yeah, it is a good thing. It's a, it's a great Agreed. thing. Agreed. And, I, I, again, it, it, it'll, it'll probably help alleviate the, this, this pain of, of, of all, you know, all of this, this, this fair hikes. You yeah. know, I mean, if the MTA is losing money because people are not paying their fair share, I pay my fair share. So I think it's unfair so to me I, and for uh, for us all in here who, who pay our fair share. And then yeah. we have these people who are just, you know, just hopping on the subway or even the, uh, on the buses or subways without paying their fair share. And I see it all the yeah. time. There's another thing to consider. Yeah. Um, the, the, the loose fare enforcement exists for our convenience. That's that, that means we could get on and off real quick. We mm-hmm. can uh, get through our business and get through the day. And when people abuse that, it makes life harder for every it, single person. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and that's the issue. You know, in fact, this city is becoming so goddamn expensive. Uh, studies show that 41 percent uh, of New Yorkers uh, uh, are moving out. They can't afford it. They can't 41%. afford to be here. 41 percent. But uh, there must like be a large percentage moving in. Moving in. <laughs> oh, no yeah, question yeah. about it. Okay. I mean, you talk about these new high rises going up, and you, you wonder who's moving into these places? Rich, rich, Foreigners, rich, 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 yes, rich people. of course. It's a lot of money coming into our country uh, from other, other continents where yeah. they're, they're flush with cash, like the Russian oligarchies and this China. Chinese, Lots of dirty yeah. money. Yeah, yeah. In fact, you know, oh, yeah. China and China, there, there are universities uh, who teach uh, the Chinese or the students how to invest in, 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 in America, their money in America. The really? University. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So uh, the, those are the folks who are, I believe, who are buying up these, these, these huge million, 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 million dollar uh, apartments. And then while the uh, smaller people are just, you know, moving out, they can't afford it. Wasn't the Chrysler building just put up for sale, speaking about? Uh, I didn't hear that. Perhaps. Yeah, I, think I saw that the other day. Yeah, well, you know, but that's that's uh, people buying coming in. And it is uh, it is tough, you know. It's tougher and tougher. You know, I took a, I rode a, uh, took a taxi uh, a couple of days ago, and this surcharge, this extra two bucks that they're charging, really pissed me off. Really? Yeah, I don't like that. I'm not happy about that whatsoever. Try out Lyft. Uh, try out Uber. Yeah, I think I'm going to try that. You You've know, never done it. You I've said. never done it. No, I've never done uh, Uber or uh, you know, I don't download apps on my phone. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I think... His big gonna... brother's watching you. <laughs> big brother's watching you. We brother. use pay right. phones. Oh, wait. Do they exist anymore? <laughs> I think I'm going to try Uber and uh, and Lyft. Probably, it'll probably take me a while to do so, to convince myself to I do gotcha. so. But, yeah, yeah this this two extra $2 fare, whatever it is, it's not... I'm not feeling that. I didn't know, know that was a thing. That yeah. Because I, I don't mean, use it's, it's taxis. It's like, what the hell, man? It's, come on. Right. It's just crazy. I'm not saying I'm a poor man, but damn, you know, I, yeah. I'd like to keep my goddamn $2. I got you. You know that what I mean? Up. Of course it adds up, yeah. Up. You know, why should I pay it if I don't have to? But I guess now I do have to, yeah. huh? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, you know, there's a uh, disturbing story headline that I read um, earlier today uh, about um, some form of racism going on at uh, the Upper East Side, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt High School, with a young lady, young student, ninth grader, was handed a note that said, uh, I'll read to you exactly what it said. It, it read, uh, niggas don't have rights Oof. here. In the city? Yeah. This and is it going was, down? It was, yeah, That's it was, awful. It was hidden. The note was hidden in a tampon uh, applicator. All right? And uh, when wow. the uh, principal what? was told about this, he apparently uh, shoved the note into a garbage to try to, I guess, get rid of the evidence. Um, but now, you know, it's people are outraged and, you know, uh, a lot, a lot is happening about this. Right Eleanor now. Roosevelt High right School, right over here in the upper uh, Upper East Side. What's the breakdown of diversity in this high school? 
we're so like where there's a, a group of people saying stuff like this. Yeah. Well, you know, allegedly these two young ladies are haven't they haven't been back to school. I don't know what happened to them. They just disappeared. Who wrote the note? Who wrote the note? Who handed this young uh, African American young lady uh, the note Christ. that niggers have How no cowardly. right yeah. here? I find you know this kind of like this race thing you know up in the air a lot lately. You know, I know some most will blame it on our current president. Um, I don't know what it is, but it's uh, lately I've been hearing a lot more about this. You know, I mean, I've actually experienced it. I told you, Ian, about yeah. three weeks ago where mm-hmm. I was on the subway platform and a gentleman. He, well, I shouldn't call him a gentleman. A jackass, in fact. Jackass. Call, called Let's me, call him uh, what call, he is. Called me nigger boy. Shit. Called me nigger boy. An aqua asshole. Yeah. Called me nigger right in front of my face. Just stood there. Maybe he's drunk, but still. Um, so that, that kind of really pissed me off because, you know, I don't have a racist bone in my body. I don't think that way. You're a kind man. You know, and, and you know, it's upsetting. But, again, I, I'm, just, I'm just here. It's up in the air yeah. a lot. And that's that's oh, not, it's- not, 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 not cool at, at all. Not cool. I'm going to uh, bring up one other topic, ugly topic, and then uh, we'll do what we do best here. You know, just a chirp about give New York City their voice, the, no- the voice that they deserve. You probably heard about this. A uh, man charged uh, uh, for brutally kicking a 78-year-old woman on the number two train a couple of weeks ago. And this was all uh, caught on, on camera. There were about two or three people filming this. Instead of helping the poor old lady. They film it. These guys are filming. That's this this poor lady get her ass kicked by, uh, you know, a 30-something-year-old oh, man. Uh, a guy. What do you say about that, uh, Jason? Um, I have a lot to say, both uh, on that on the previous topic. So I'm going to have to... Uh Kind of uh, pick the good stuff. Okay. Um, we live in a, a very, very large society. Um, here's something to consider: smaller societies with tighter communities, they generally can't afford to cannot afford to be apathetic about uh, each other's plights. Mm-hmm. We, uh, since we live in a very large society, we are frequently very disconnected from uh, what other people struggle with. Like, I'm never going to see this person again. Why do I care? Right. Why should I get involved in their business? How do I know that uh, they're not going to drag me down with them? Yeah. So people grow up frequently thinking this way and i mean it's it's toxic it's terrible and uh, that's one of the reasons why we have so much division in this country because people do not look out for each other especially across subgroups and cultural boundaries yeah and i mean it, yeah. we would all be better off if we could actually do that it would no i i it totally would. agree on that we're going to come back after our trips and we're going to talk to you uh, mr jason flowers a lot more about his thoughts and opinions all right about certain topics all right, uh, with that, I think it's about that time to liven up the show. What do you say, Ian? Trip about it. Yeah, baby. All right, folks, these comments you're about to hear are real comments from real New Yorkers, your mothers, your brothers, your sex partners, your Jason Flowers, your <laughs> Jews. <laughs> Take give us some of that tune and Ian Bamberger, kick it off. Oh, also, wow. folks, if you'd like to chirp about it live on the show, call 646-690-2976. With that, Ian Bamberger, take it away. All right, ladies oh. and gentlemen, uh, first chirp of the week. On the show, here we go. Angel from Bronx. And Angel has to say this. Taking the MTA every day is like being in a loveless relationship that I can't seem to get out of. <laughs> Hashtag love hate the MTA. All right, I, I can do I can that. That's some honest I mean, stuff. I mean, it is like a love hate relationship. I mean, you, you know, you can't live without it. I mean, New Yorkers really rely on this, on the subway system. I mean, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's a definite, you oh, know? Yeah. So, I mean, do you really, really hate it? I guess you can hate it, but you still, you got to use it. You know, it's terrible. Like, I think the commuting infrastructure needs to be updated. And who am I? I'm not, I'm not the mayor. I'm not anyone running any it's of these very programs. very antiquated here. It is. Holland Tunnel's two lanes. Like, if you want to go in, Holland Tunnel, two lanes. You know, it, it's pretty wild to go in. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> You're just saying, you're just chirping about it. All right. All right, who was the chirping, by the way? Who was that? It was Angel from the Bronx. Well, Angel, thank you for that chirp. Keep them coming at chirpaboutit.com. With that, Jason, what do you have to chirp about? Welcome, by the way. Oh, Oh, I'm still reading these. Oh, you're still reading them? (laughs) All right. Do you want to, uh, Jules, you want, do you want to take over his place and then he'll come back to sure. Jason? All right, let's so, do it, Jules. Here Jules we go. Jules is the uh, Jada, my silent Bob anyway, so go, go ahead. <laughs> wow, nice. Thank you, that. honey bunny. My <laughs> awesome <laughs> honey bunny. New um, so we have Roman from Queens. He says, I was in London last week and can report that at rush hour, the tube is every bit as crowded as the NYC subway. But people were far more polite, though. Hashtag MTA. Hmm. That does not shock me. That does not shock you. 
we, we have a lot of angry, bitter people here in these parts, and it's just get out of my way. What have you done for me lately? Yeah. They're like glued to their <laughs> electronic devices and totally what we call like a situational obliviosity. We know all about this. A, A, A. I love that. Yeah. What have you done for me lately? <laughs> <laughs> out of my way, out of my way. All right, out of my way. With that, Jason, what do you have to chirp about this evening? <laughs> oh. All right, uh, I, I, uh, I think this is a good one. How not to pick up a woman on the subway. Uh, <laughs> learn out the little six-letter wordscapes that she's been trying to get between 59th and, uh, so, uh, okay, and 86th Street on the five trains. Kimberly, Upper West Side. What's the six-letter word? I don't. Uh, okay, um, I'm not entirely sure I understand this, but I believe she's trying to say that uh, you should not make it uh, announce where a woman is go- is trying to get to because somebody mm. might want to follow her. Ah, and all that is, I see. I mean, uh, it's. Uh, I mean, if you're if you're not a woman, it's very easy to be very insensitive about something like that. Hmm, interesting. And I'm not sure I get that. Well, you know what? I think uh, I think Jason is on to something. You know, sometimes I, you know, hey, listen, these New Yorkers, they're just chirping they're, they're, whatever's on their mind, which is great. Well, I mean, look, I'm I'm a I, I'm a big guy. I'm fairly well built. If I walking along the street, I don't have to worry about t- people bothering me. Typically, I'm not the obvious choice, but a lot of people do not have that luxury. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, and it's it. I mean, it's when 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 you uh, are typical are. are custom living that way it's easy to forget about that and mm-hmm. it's it's good to look out for your people yeah no 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 you're right especially these young ladies these females you have to look out for them i you concur know. with you on that accord i mean i'm uh, physically strong but i cannot compare to a man's strength it doesn't matter if it's yeah. 12 noon or 12 midnight but nothing good happens after midnight people yeah. you know what's interesting you know at times i ride the subway about you know between midnight and 1 a.m and for some reason, the, lately or these days, I see we find a lot more f- single females on the train riding the subways, you know, at midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning compared to many, many, many years ago. You know, you find a lot more people on the subway. But there were times, you know, I just feel like just walking, just following these uh, these females as they get off the train because I just, I'm just concerned. You know, I don't want anything to happen to them. And oh, you follow yeah, to protect. Yeah, well, no, of course, to protect, not to, uh, you know, but of course I don't do it. But in my head, I go, I, I hope she's all right. I just hope she makes it home yeah. all right, you know. But I, I was in Bushwick today. Yeah. And uh, little kids, kids were like three feet tall, four feet tall, walking by themselves. It's crazy. You know, I, well, I think it's like, I don't know, I guess respect in the neighborhood. They know nothing's going to go down. Yeah. But it, it's just, I don't know. I, I'm 28 years, 27 years old. Is this the father coming out to me? My yeah, soon-to-be yeah, yeah. father? Yeah. My, my wife's well, not pregnant. Yeah, your I'm biological saying, clock is ticking. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, mine is. Marissa <laughs> Tomei. Oh, my gosh. I love that movie, My Cousin Vinny. That's a good one. All right, Ian. What do we have? Let's, uh, let's keep the trips going, oh, yeah. and then we'll take a break by Mr. Ian Bamberger in just a little bit. Oh. This is Edwin from Harlem, and Edwin has to say this. A dude walking down the block loudly singing, Silence is Golden. <laughs> really, dude? <laughs> <laughs> hashtag irony, hashtag only in New York, hashtag Harlem. Okay, <laughs> okay. So this guy's loudly singing. Silence. What's the title of the song? Silence is Golden. <laughs> and he's singing out loud. <laughs> <laughs> what song is that? I'm thinking Sounds of Silence. Silence is Golden. Silence is Golden. <laughs> I don't well, know I that guess, song. Uh, it's a good title. Silence is Golden. But this, meanwhile, this guy's just singing out loud, you know? <laughs> All <Well>. right. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> good observation. I love it. All right, Jason, what do we have to chirp about tonight? Okay, Um, I have this one. Been sitting on the E train for 20 minutes, and the conductor goes, Good evening, passengers. Mumble, mumble, mumble. How nice. <laughs> only in I, uh, hashtag only in on YC, hashtag sharp about it. From Jay, the Metro Tech um, area. What's that say? Metro Tech. Uh, I can Brooklyn. read it. Metro Brooklyn. Tech. Yes, thank you. Okay, so downtown okay. Metro okay. Tech, yes. Brooklyn. Okay. BK all That's the way. I, BK all the way. The reason I picked this one is because I really love when people love their jobs and get to goof around a little bit of it and lighten up people's days. Mm. Like if you could get on the mic and uh, say a little silly thing as a, condu- a train conductor, why A not? corny joke, for example. <laughs> I know. Liven up people's days a little bit. That's great. And <laughs> don't, <laughs> and if they do it, don't hold it against and them. And next stop is... Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> yeah, like, like, and everyone goes like, yes. what did you say? Like, I don't know what he said. I'm on the same train as you. I, what do I, I didn't hear him. If you didn't hear him, how do you expect me to hear him? He's speaking a different language. <laughs> <laughs> True. He's speaking um, s- words from the Aqua Dictionary. Uh oh. Uh oh. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, uh, Jules. What do you have to chirp about? Yes, 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 yes. So, to the woman sitting across from me on the L train eating a red velvet cupcake, I hope your last bit falls 
<laughs> on the floor, exclamation point. Excuse me? Who oh, enough? Celeste from Brooklyn. That is not nice. You know what? Celeste was probably hungry, just pissed. Perhaps. To wish someone's that, that, red that, velvet cupcake to fall on the floor? That, that <laughs> cupcake <laughs> looked aqualicious. In fairness, we don't know what the Four. story is. In equal Shame. fairness, we can't be expected to take a side since we don't know what the story we is. We don't know what the story is. Correct. Do you think she's maybe teasing her with the uh, with the red velvet cake? I you know, like know. like like everybody like, taunting, mm, taunting. <laughs> and licking her lips like maybe mm. she was like making some in a very disturbing noises. That's what I that mean. We're, like we're, we're mm. getting Celeste hot in the pants. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> maybe she needed to get some sexinating and anyway. Well, she just needed to get. I out digress. Of you you got it. Good job. Well, that's me. <laughs> lovely day. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Oh boy, I love it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do one more trip, one more round. Oh, I've got one. All right, let's give Why New not? York. Let's give New York City, <laughs> New York, because they have points. They deserve. This is <laughs> amazing. This is what great. are you talking about? <laughs> we are where, about where? the trip. This is Marcus from Brooklyn Heights, and Marcus says this. So, yellow cabs in New York City complain that Uber and Lyft are taking business from them, but when I'm hailing a taxi. And seven empty ones passed me by. Why am I supposed to Why? support them? Why? Why? That's Why? a good trip. You know what? That's taking your prompt. That's a good trap, you know. What? Why? I mean, yeah. why? I got nine and uh, nine problems, and, and uh, taxi ain't one. Taxi ain't one. <laughs> so we got Lyft, we got Uber, we got city bikes, yeah. we got uh, we got scooters, we got everything. Uh, hey, I've never done a city bike. I, I'd really like to get involved either. in that. Maybe we'll you know have what? a little. Uh, wait, let's have a little daytime aqua adventure. I like that idea. I gotta go to the Whitney Museum to see the Andy War- Warhol exhibit. I told you, yeah. Patrick, before it closes oh, at the Warhol's end of the month. At the Whitney, I've got two free tickets. You know what? That's free. Okay. Nothing is free. Thanks for the invite, Jules. That's right. Real, <laughs> real nice drills. Well, Ian, you could be Talk my sloppy seconds. Energy. Back up. Triple. Back up. <laughs> quadruple. Back up. Quadruple. Back up. Oh, that's love great. you. Oh, mean that's it. That's aqua love right there. <laughs> that's aqua love. Quadruple back up. Quadruple back up. Quadruple back up. Quadruple back up. It, comes, quadruple aqua. it comes from right here. My my deep, deep, deep seated aqua on the heart. I love it. I love, I love it. it. All right, love Jason. He's, right, he's ready to chirp about it. What do you got there? Okay. Um. I wish there was. I wish there were mandatory bus monitors for teenagers heading home from school on public transit. The rowdiest, <laughs> most foul-mouthed kids ever. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag NYC problems from Roger and Astoria. Well, actually, mm. you were just talking about that, Ian, uh, about yeah. these loud-mouthed kids and. and yeah. Roger, lo- uh, I actually agree Crazy. with you. I think that that's a great People thing. Roger that. Kids. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, kids. Can- <laughs> I've uh, I've been on school buses. Sometimes kids save their most terrible sides for the school bus, whereas there's the least rule enforcement. Yeah, exactly. They can just act out. No, they're they're, 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 they're horrible. Everything you know. pent up all day. I've also you been assaulted on a school bus. It's been a rough bus. day in second you've grade. A, you've been let assaulted? me tell you. Well, um, it's uh, it's perhaps not a fair statement to say that only um, because he was basically harassing and assaulting me in school too. I deliberately provoked him on the school bus so that uh, he would be legally accountable outside the school boundaries, mm-hmm. and that worked Marty out very nice. This is something you did. Oh yeah, correct. Wait, he, some person was harassing you. Ongoing and they... harassment, very deliberate. Okay, Maybe I deliberately provoked school. him on the school bus so that, and I did not hit him back so that I could get a legal case, and it went very smoothly. <laughs> How old were you when this happened? <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, I think I was maybe sixteen, seventeen. You already, stage, already an attorney, it. huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it, Jason. You, you do you not love all of this. What I mean, it was the only way I was going to get rid of him. Get rid of him. <laughs> Speak smart. You see that? <laughs> Damn, <laughs> I'm not pissing you off. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Shit. man. That's We're good. just having a great you time on the show today. The day right, has not been we, wasted. <laughs> the day has not been wasted. <laughs> do we have one more chirp before we take a break? By Mr. Ian Bamberger. What do you got, Jules? Andy. I can I can do this. Let's one. do it. Let's do one last one. It's a little bit long, so everyone like get comfortable, get in your house. All uniform, right, let's do it. Put, put on your granny slippers and your moo moo. All right, wait Uh-oh. for it. So shout out to the Italian tourists that were recording walking into the main hall in Grand Central Station on their phones. Mm. They looked up, gasped, and said, "Wow." Mm. Made this jaded, cold-headed New Yorker smile because I forgot how amazing this place is most of the time. Ooh, that's a beautiful Nicole, term. comma, Upper East Side. Mm-mm-mm. Hashtag I love New York. Oh, we love New York as well. And I love that chirp, Nicole. That's great. We're just surrounded by some pretty incredible architecture and art, like sculptures. And, you know, now with the High Line, with the advent of that. And just... um, 
randomly placed throughout the city. There's some beautiful sculptures. There's a really cool aqua drop that's right near like MSG, kind mm-hmm. of nestled in there and that road that you can't walk on. Yeah. I'm going to say it's in the 30s. Um, and that cool love you know, a sign that says L-O-V-E with the heart. With the heart, yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. any event, that's very beautiful. And that's I think a beautiful it's, um, chart. We all need to just take a time out, slow down, yes. savor the slowness, be present, put away the telephonic devices or whatever electronic things, and be present and look around. Do a 360, you know what I mean? Yeah. And just appreciate and, and just observe. take what it all think? in. Indeed. After all, we are in the greatest smell city the in the world. Smell the aqua roses. You know? <laughs> or yeah. whatever thing you want to smell. Yeah, don't let the tourists get take advantage of this beautiful city that we live in. I mean, let's take advantage of it, of it ourselves. A- Aqua Amen. Aqua Patrick. Amen. I love that. <laughs> All right, uh, Jason, do you have one more before we close it out? All right, let let's do it. All right. All right. Um, I've started, Why not? Uh, I've started Why? writing, quote unquote, good luck with your audition on every restaurant receipt I sign. <laughs> Amazing. Hashtag two good looking hashtag models, hashtag actors, hashtag in one NYC, hashtag sharp about all it. of the people. This is from Kevin in Union Square. Industry. We love you all. That's a great joke. <laughs> I want to save that and frame that. <laughs> well, take it. It's all yours. Yeah, yeah, I'll let you Kev, this one. Kev, when, when can we have a little aqua date? <laughs> I wonder what Kev does. You remember? You remember Kev, call uh, on in. Call, up, call us. The call on in. Uh, 646. Six. Go ahead. Six nine zero two niner seven six. There we go. Call Come on, in. Kev. Call in, Get Kev. involved. We Call want in. you, boy. You know that shot reminds me of a great uh, little it. restaurant on uh, on in New- Union Square. It was just recently shut down the uh, coffee shop. That place you know, the has been around. Where I was in college in the nineties. That was like a, an anchor. Like, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's tragic. Is Republic no still open? I love that place. Uh, I'm not sure if Republic. It's right next door. Right. The cute oh. little, like, it's, it's communal tables. It's like ramen, Chinese. Like, no, I think Asian. they shut down as well. Stop it. Yeah, 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 yeah. They shut, shut down. the front door. Everything's shutting down here in the city. All right, but, you know, we're still growing, huh? Trevor Biden. We're not going to shut we're down. Growing. We're not going to shut our lips. We're evolving. We're, we're, not, we're elevating. We're that's expanding. That's right. We're going to keep beaking just like little chickens. Awkward chirping. <laughs> chirp, chirping. Chirp. <laughs> I love it. All right, folks, that was our round of chirps. Hope you enjoyed. Please go on to my website, chirpaboutit.com, and continue to share your New York moments, thoughts, observations, and all. With that, we're going to take a break by Mr. Ian Bamberger, and we'll come back and uh, speak with Jason, Jules, and everybody else here. Nice. Good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, thank you, Jason and Jules, for being on the show. My speaking pleasure. for me and Jules, th- uh, you're quite welcome. Uh, good, 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 good. <laughs> you are now speaking for Jules. <laughs> my master, I shall take heed. <laughs> <laughs> um, Only speak when spoken to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's master submissive stuff we right there. We are here amidst uh, a little bit of BDSM mm, activity. Wait, what we now? Are. Did I sign up for this? What are you talking about? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Turn 180 degrees. Uh, so, we just have so much fun here. Oh, so Alrighty, much fun. So much fun. Yeah. Before I kick it off, April 21st. Uh, April 21st, I'm at the U-Cut. The U-Cut is a uh, 420 friendly nice. Well, it's not 420 friendly. I just think it is. 20. Um, yeah, it's a nice little place. I'm going to be playing a few tunes April 21st at the Uke Hut. How do you uh, spell that? U- like Uke. Uke. Uh, like Y-U-K-E. Ooh, Uke. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I was just thinking Yuka. Like, 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 like a ukulele. Like, 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 like a <laughs> uh, But yeah, this is a tune off my next DP. It's called Candy Cane Girl. All right. I'm getting a my little bit excited. Candy Cane Girl. I'll savor the flavor. Ian Bamberger, folks. Everything like you are Everybody like a candy cane girl I had to have a taste So that is why I'm here a today But your mama Don't want me to stay Around here anymore, and your father wants to lock me away and throw away the key to your door. Yeah, my candy cane girl, I savor the flavor. Of everything are you are my candy cane girl. Woo! I had to have 
another taste So that is why I'm here today But your brother Woo. Wants to knock me out And throw away the key To your door Cause it's your sister Yeah, I could miss her Why I'm here today She's my candy cane girl I savor the flavor Of everything you are My candy cane girl I had to have another taste So that is why I'm here today Candy cane girl, I savor the flavor of everything you are. My candy cane girl, I had to have another taste, so that is why I'm here today. My candy cane girl. My candy cane girl, she's my candy cane girl. Oh yeah, be and bamberger, folks. Be and bamberger. We'll be uh, right back. Slow jam. I think the music video of this, this is Ed Lemo. Who is Ed Lemo, and why should I listen? Ed Lemo is an attorney that is unique in that he gives consumers good, solid information about the law that will help protect them against irresponsible drivers, landowners, and doctors and hospitals who are negligent. And cause you harm. Ed Lemo has been representing individuals against insurance companies since 1984. Ed Lemo limits his practice to accident, injury, and medical malpractice claims. You can find out more about me at my website at www.lemolaw.com. That's www.lemolaw.com. Or you can reach me at 646 646- 522-9082. So if you're injured in an accident or a victim of malpractice and you need a trial attorney who has experience in the courtroom and gets results, call Ed Lemo at 646-522-9082 or you can reach me at edwardlemo at yahoo.com or you can go to my website for further information, www.lemolaw.com. You'll be glad you did. Thank you. All right, Edward Lemo, personal injury attorney. Great one. So please check him out through his website, edwardlemo.com. Uh, edwardlemo.com, lemolaw.com. Please check him out, Edward Lemo, great personal injury attorney. Also, the show is brought to you by Chirpin' Chickens. Chirpinchickens.com. Please go onto their site, download their app for a huge discount, 5%. Just mention the show, chirp about it live. Okay, we also brought to you by Accordia Shipping. For all of your shipping needs, please go onto accordiashipping.com and... Uh, Download their app also for a huge discount. Again, just mention Chirp about it live. All right, with that, oh my God, Ian, what a song! Thank you, Pat. Yeah, Smooth, cool little ditty about a, <coughs> a man By whose the way, family hates him. I would like to repeat this sister. for all the lovely Aquanators and Aquanizers of the Aquavers that that song got me. Mm, hot in mm. the pants. I'm ready for some <laughs> hot, hot monkey love. That's what I said. That that to do. Do. Oh, you yeah, all boy. need to know about this. Hot monkey love. <laughs> Oi. Oi. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know. Am I sexually frustrated? Um, <laughs> Let's just say Ian knows how to bring it out. <laughs> He's extracting it oh, from my. him. Oh my part of god. My being Mama. every cell in this aqua <laughs> Damn, Jules. Oh. <laughs> hey! Jules is drooling. Yeah. Yeah. She's baby. looking for some aqua, aqua in the mouth. Oh. 
in the deep end of the aqua pool. Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'll tell you, man, we have some talent in this room. I got to say, I love the show. Ian, by the way, uh, I saw you perform at uh, Bitter End last, oh, yeah. uh, last week. Yeah. What a great job, man. Thank you, Pat. You are Appreciate really it. talented. You're an amazing musician. Sure. Rock and In roll, fact, baby. I, I got to see you uh, perform with your your entire band. Yeah. Which, you know... Um, what is the ensemble comprised one, of? Can you, um, how many? I, I, I heard you... I always hear your song alone, you know, here on the show. Yeah. But it was interesting to hear you with the entire... With your band. Yeah. You know, with, you had a drummer, you had a, a pianist there. Yep. Uh, bass and then you had bass. guitar and singing. So I got All a chance to really hear the Ian Bamberger uh, uh, Ian Bamberger song. band. Bam. Yeah. That was yeah. cool. Oh, I, I appreciate tell you, it, You're so talented. Thank you, Pat. You know, trying to make my way in this ridiculous world. Yeah, in this ridiculous world. Oh, my God. <laughs> the appropriate <laughs> response would have been, I know. I know. <laughs> 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 Fucking right. I am talented. <laughs> That's right. Oh, you are, you're just peons. Hello, <laughs> Captain <laughs> My game. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Captain Obvious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, we're having a great time. Well, Jason, I'd like to welcome you again on the show, Trip About It Live. I mean, again, you were on, on the phone. You called in last week. Uh, you spoke about a lot of things, great things, all right? So I'm happy to have you here tonight. So let's chirp about it. Okay. Uh, I, in fact, I said we're going to continue last week's conversation, discussion. So let's let's do so, mm-hmm. all right? Uh, I don't really have a, a, a topic planned tonight, <laughs> but I figured let's do it uh, kind of like, let's do a free, freestyle. Do it live. Yeah, go with go. the let's, aqua let's, flow, let's Patrick. Let's go with the aqua flow. Do you prefer Pat or Patrick? Or what? Uh, Help us understand because... I say Pat. Well, I say Pat on the show, Pat Sainville. Well, I could say, you know, I think... Do you like Patrick more? I like Patrick. Patrick oh, is I a do. really certainly, beautiful, I, solid, strong yeah, name. It is. I, Wait, I like my name. Should I be saying Patrick? No, I would say Pat. Pat is cool. Okay. okay. Yeah, you know, Pat's name. All right. I like Pat. 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 Not Pat, Pat. Pat. Patty. <laughs> Patty boy. Patty, Patty cake. Patty, Patty boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Patty. Hey. <laughs> All right. All right, uh, let's talk about, you know, this, uh, really, seriously, there's a lot of uh, uh, strong topics that we can discuss. And uh, I love chirping about different topics. And, you know, I think we have some strong minds in this room tonight. So let's, uh, let's do so. Let's speak about um, race. Race, okay. Yeah, race in this country, race in New York. Again, uh, I sort of experienced some kind of racism a couple of uh, know, weeks ago. I don't know if that You're was racism that. or what. I don't know. The guy was just talking just shit. Drunken idiot. Yeah, but wh- what do you smack. think? Do you think there is, there's some truth to that or he's just talking shit? I mean, the, it came into his mind. It came from somewhere inside him. So alcohol is sometimes a social lubricant that brings out the darker side of yes. people. So it was there, Pat. I'm sorry to say it. Yeah. In my what, opinion. What was that? What do you think? What do you say about that, Jason? Well, as for alcohol, um, I'm quite happy never to partake of it for the most part. I mean, I mean, I might do wine once in a while. The, the energy in wine sometimes feels wonderful. Vodka is like the intuitive compass says, like, no, don't touch. Bad. It's a hard liquor, man. It's, yeah. You know. So, I mean... It, Fermentation has been uh, used over uh, in many civilizations and hasn't caused any major real issues for the most part until the distillery came to be a thing. And when you had the distillery and this was mass produced using the same plants all the time, people would get addicted to it. And uh, now we do have people who uh, can't really get off the bottle sometimes, and it's unfortunate. We had prohibition. I mean, that was a whole movement in this country. And people wouldn't have it. Yeah. But uh, back to race. Um yeah. Here's something that people don't talk about often, because there's a lot to say about race that people have said a lot of, so I'm going to say something that people don't say much. Um, for the vast majority of America's history, uh, slavery has existed, uh, pr- approximately three-fourths of it, and people forget that frequently. Point. Um, when it comes to changing cultural norms and ideas, um, it usually happens very slowly. Furthermore, Americans, for the most part, hate me if you must for saying it, we are in a very entitled culture compared to most other cultures. Why? Um, it, I think it has uh, a lot to do with, uh, I mean, th- the, the whole uh, Ayn Rand uh, capitalism and democracy thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, a, a lot of other countries have this, have this to lesser extents. Mm-hmm. We have uh, a tremendous sense of uh, freedom and entitlement compared mm-hmm. to other countries. And sometimes with freedom and entitlement comes a sense of entitlement to be ignorant, to be angry, and not to have to think critically. And that's very unfortunate in a, in a go- system of government where everybody t- participates because when people shirk their responsibility, don't bother to get educated or understand their issues and just vote their emotions or uh, like look for politicians who uh, repeat... Abortion rhetoric. Yeah, is like, an emotional vote for a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. But uh, when people just... Uh, I mean, like, 
populist uh, politicians who just spout rhetoric over and over and don't invite people to actually think about what they're saying. Mm -hmm. They invite people to make mistakes. Like who? Like Donald Trump. Hell Whether yeah. you agree with him or not, he uh, is a populist, and he is trying to get not to, to get you not to think critically, and he is trying to get you to uh, just just go with the flow, go be a, the be, flow. be a part of the crowd, and that's where, that's where you give your power away. You yeah. don't want to do that, no matter what you believe in. Mm. Very smart, Greg. No, Very good man, analysis. That, yeah. Huh? I mean, Trump tapped into that base, that group yes, of people well, who are just uh, die hard. Whatever he says goes and. Yeah, speaking of... And I'll be absolutely clear. He doesn't love you. He doesn't care about your issues. He's trying to get rich. And maybe that's what you love about him, but he's not trying to get you rich. Mm -hmm. And his base is the exact opposite. Very myopic. Trump's the rich billionaire from New York City, and the blue-collar Midwest worker is the person... Who's, uh, that's and him? He's gone oh, bankrupt geez. like some well, inordinate amount of time. So of and time. he's reinvented himself. So it's kind of the irony of you know our, the system and what we're built on here in this country. And yeah. in any event, no. Again, I, I think uh, you know since uh, he's uh, come into power, people a little bit. I think a lot more loose with with their words as far as race is concerned. Yes. Um, I, I think he's it's not. He doesn't exacerbated. actually. Yeah, I concur with I you. Don't, I, I don't think he actually says it. You know, uh, you know, hops on the mic and say, "Hey, listen, trip about your your true feelings, your race." Well, well there's good it. people on both but, sides, Pat. Yeah, good people on both oh, sides. Oh, absolutely. Piat. That's absolutely. what he. Piat. That's what he says. Uh, but I, I think uh, he does um, kind of, you know, shed some. He leads the way in a way. You know, he makes it kind of people feel uh, it's okay. I think to to really uh, be themselves or share what's really on their mind. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Because people are entitled to feel what they want to feel or, of or think what they want to think. Everyone is. Uh, I think it all happens from experience. Like race. Like, we'll talk speech, about racism again. <clears throat> it comes from somewhere. It starts from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Should you really? Should I really blame you? I'm not saying you uh, exactly, uh, uh, Jason. But if you were not to like blacks for whatever reason, should I really hate you or should I blame you for that? Should I be upset with you? Well, he's uh, part. It's a difficult or, question. <laughs> no, no. But, I will tell uh, you something. When I was a youngster in school, um, there was one kid in my class in my in elementary school who was always mean to me, and it was the one black kid, mm. and it honestly didn't uh, spark a good first impression. Later mm. on, I realized it was a lot more nuanced than I assumed, and like, holy shit, he's probably mean because he's been mistreated himself. Mm. Mm. And uh, I mean, it's right. uh, it and it, that's part of what made me realize over time in my life that it's really, really good to understand the big picture before that's you make right. assumptions on smaller co- sets of context. Before you make Jason, an most people you, don't you, do you, that. You drove it right home. That's, that's my point. You know, there's a reason for everything, I, I believe. I most really people believe don't so. see the larger picture, though. That's they just don't. very insightful what you said. And, think like, you know, it's nice no, to have you're right. people like that. Well, I have a good friend of mine, by the way. Uh, Will. Will is here uh, in the house. William, welcome. Sure about Will it. Hey, Will. entered the building. I've been friends with Will for uh, 18 years. A great friend of mine. Yeah. Years. 17 years. Liar, right, liar. Well. Pendelone's on fire, Pat. We had too much to drink that night. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Let's get back to the alcohol. No we judges. <laughs> What's your favorite aqua cocktail? Uh, bold red wine, non fruity. Non fruity. <laughs> but I have some. Nice. That's so. Wet. But I but I have some acid reflux lately, so I've been I've been switching to Cuba Libre. <laughs> I recall he thought that my cocktail, which was a titties with a splash of cran, was his Oy. Cuba Libre. I was like, good sir, my my cocktail so is red. Let, let, who, let's who get back. Who's your on, audience here? Who? Let, let's get back on track. Hold on one minute. Uh, 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 oh. Well, race. Uh, yeah, race. Something. Because it, it is a it is a big uh, issue. It's a big topic. Um, I have friends, of course, of uh, from all uh, nations, all nationalities. And again, I hate to to to, to hear or hear or see certain things, especially this this, this head, le- headline I read today about this girl uh, receiving a note in a in a in a tampon mm-hmm. you know, at school. Like, where is this coming from? I thought we sh- this should be behind us. I mean, Not in New York City too. I'm surprised. In New York City, nothing I mean, surprises that, an me anymore. Statement. Yeah, but again, you know, I thought about it on my way here. Does it start at home or does it begin when, you know, when people go to school or they're out with friends? So it's it's a great combo. And in today's day and age, with your phone, your smartphone, you have access to all the speech, mm-hmm. good and bad. So it, I think it's a, a combination. Uh, uh, it's definitely a complex combination of home, friends, access to an unimaginable amount of information. Yeah. Uh, that that could be hurtful and racist as well. I think it's a hybrid amalgamation, like he was saying, to echo that. And it, but I do believe sincerely that it starts at home. But social media and just what's available and accessible to us—it's just 
it's almost too much information over stimulation and it's not yeah how do you sift through it or what whatever is relevant or resonates with that individual um it really is rooted i i believe sincerely in the values and how you were raised and mm-hmm. is there um what's instilled in you you know right. is it is it respect is it kindness is it being genuine is it being loyal is it being honest is it being present is it being respectful is it you know is it holding doors and saying thank you is it looking someone in the eye when you speak to them is it shaking their hand firmly yeah. or it starts there and sometimes we're, with there. a lot of these humans these children do are, come from broken homes mm. there's a lot of just dysfunction conjunction junction and so i think like i came from an, a addictive home and like everyone plays their role it's there's um it's almost like it's an art you know, people adapt and this one's the martyr and this one's the enabler and this one's the codependent <laughs> and this one's the addict yeah and who's gonna have the voice and whatever else but case in point here is it's just you know sometimes i think how did my three brothers and i all come from the same parents hmm. totally different it's almost like was mom dipping with the milkman or the postman <laughs> or whatever <laughs> in all sincerity right, I mean, jason's right. got a brother i mean it's milk. interesting. <laughs> the milkman delivers. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> milkman delivers. Milk man no, delivers. but it's, and it's, we'll it's interesting though, about how what you extracted from those experiences. Do yeah. you understand? Are you cognizant enough? Do you have the self awareness to say what do I want to do differently yeah. to break a cycle? Others repeat it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so there's this element or aspect of like the behavioral, environmental. Um, I'm not like a psychologist or anything, but I just know from my own story. Mm -hmm. And finally, I'll be 40 next year. It's like, wow, I've had all these aha moments where it's like I need to create boundaries. I need to break the cycle. I know what I do not want to be, what Mm -hmm. I want to emulate and be. And it's taken a long time, people. Mm -hmm. But you you have to see those experiences and those just what do you learn from them what do you, you extract yeah, from them yeah, yeah. but it's taken a lot of work i said it's not easy and it's not fun and it's not pleasant and jason's been an instrumental and integral part in helping support me from the capacity of healing with his reiki energy work and just um his intuition and these gifts that he's cultivating yeah. and I, I just to, to kind of focus on that i think a little bit you know we when he called in last week you were kind all of you folks were fascinated <laughs> the the listeners Absolutely, yeah. and here in the room i mean it's just your energy resonates and permeates throughout like physical and like just <laughs> the interwebs <laughs> and the telephonic connection of the yeah. and so i'm telling you he's a special bird and he's just been um just a very consistent solid force in allowing me to to heal and it's not pleasant or fun but it's like if you're open to letting go and just you're open to letting go yeah it's not easy but sometimes we we get sucked into these patterns right and the behaviors jason it's uh, like well, a what you said about letting go is very important um one thing that people frequently don't understand nowadays, especially, um, I mean, look, I'm not knocking science and mainstream medicine is offers a lot of things, but within the specific scope of how to manage emotion, it's, there's a a lot of strides that still need to be made. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways to heal from emotion is to actively consciously and bravely feel it. And when you're taking a lot of antidepressants, not that I'm knocking that if you need it, Mm. um, you are dulling the symptoms. And when you dull the symptoms, you slow the processing and it makes it take longer to heal. Yeah. But it doesn't heal it, though. It just makes it longer. I you have to feel your feelings. I personally got a lot better after I got off my antidepressants, and it really sucked for a little while, but after I yeah. did it, it just got better. Well, it's just the crutch to get you over it until you get some help. That's, that's how it should be. Well, that's how it is. Mm-hmm. For mm-hmm. some people, not for all, unfortunately. For some people, it's chemical. Well, I, I was like actively taking them for like 25 years, and after I stopped taking them, I maybe suffered for two years, but then the depression wow. was gone. Hmm. And I'm not going to say that's how everybody uh, should view the medicine or that's how everybody's going to experience it, but it's my experience. Right. What made I'm you stop talk about it. taking them for um, two years? Honestly? Yeah. If you want to get off an of antidepressant, just hang out with me and Patrick. <laughs> yes. And it's, what about and me? Nice. Also, what? always work with your psychiatrist. Never get them off, off them by yourself. I'll just put that out there. No, for that's sure, smart. under medical supervision, um, that's... But, uh, yes, um, what, was, what, was, uh, what would you just ask me? I don't recall. Okay. I asked, why did you stop? Oh, why did I stop? Um, I kind of felt like it was right to stop. Like, I don't necessarily need this. I have always instinctively wanted to explore my issues instead of cover them up. And, mm-hmm. I mean, despite uh, everybody around me at the time uh, telling me that that wasn't the way, I, for a long time, it felt like this was the way I wanted to do things. And at this point, I was all grown up, capable of making some of my own decisions. And it was time, I mean, I had been languishing in depression for maybe 10 plus years, it was time for me to try things my way. Your way. And yeah. it worked. 
I'm was that your intuition, you. Jason? I want to say it was. I wasn't. I mean, I, my third eye wasn't wide open at the time, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I, I, I've still had intuitive inklings even before then. Mm-hmm. I didn't necessarily know enough to listen to them all the time, but I'd know better now. <laughs> <laughs> you listen to them all of the time. Well, I have to say, Jason, I am proud of you. Speaking of depression, let's 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 hit on that a little bit. Depression, you know. Uh, again, first lady, New York City of New York City, Charlene McRae, uh, she had a uh, press co- press conference today about this program, Thrive NYC, that she uh, she runs, <coughs> and um, she answered a lot of questions today. And uh, one of the uh, uh, the topics was depression, as far as w- uh, depression was. Uh, the main uh, ingredient into it, which causes uh, uh, mental health mm-hmm. for a lot of people, especially here. Well, in New York, I'm going to talk about New York because this is where I live. This is where we live. What do you say about that? I know you you, you spoke about that a little bit last week, mm-hmm. uh, but let's continue that discussion about uh, mental illness. Okay. Okay. Depression. You're talking about depression now. You've suffered from depression. I have for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And you. Are you still depressed from time to time? Does it, is it? Are you in and out, or are you completely healed? I would. Uh, I mean, if I were to uh, answer that on a, a purely technical basis, I would no. say that I am no longer under uh, any sense of the word depressed. Hmm. However, I do have um, <coughs> b- po- pockets of uh, hmm. buried trauma and repressed emotion that I must actively bring to the surface and process. process. Yes. Yeah. It's work. Sure. Yeah, it's work. Uh, do you ever feel the urge of? You know, getting back on your medication or... Not in the least. N- never. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the lifestyle I live has me on a constant natural high. Sometimes I'm just giggling to myself for no reason. I'm perfectly lucid and clear. I might as well be smoking weed all the time with no bad side effects. Imaginary <laughs> <laughs> aqua weed. That sounds pretty good. To be living like that. Would you like to get involved, Mr. Bamberger? It's honestly a beautiful life. I, Sign me up, and, baby. All, I, I mean, I just eat fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't eat meat? No. Yeah, plant based. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, vegan. Yeah, I'm vegan. And he's actually also opened up my um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What are we giggling yeah, just about? Leave, leave, just leave that ambiguous void there, just hanging. <laughs> <laughs> In any event, I'm now exploring. I'm slowly kind of converting to becoming, you know, vegetarian, vegan. There's just um, I'm dealing with some inflammation issues and this is for the female audience of yes. uh, significant breast tenderness and inflammation chronically four months six months a huge swollen tender so painful i've had three emergency mammograms and ultrasounds Whoa. in the last five years i will be 40 next year i repeat it's scary there's breast cancer in my family mm. um on the maternal side my mother it, hers ended up being a lumpectomy and benign but my aunt on the maternal side double mastectomy um, total reconstruction and lung cancer and a bevy of other things, but you really need to be hyper vigilant and mindful and like early intervention. It's, but the the notion here is, in discussions with with Jason and another one of our friends, Echo, you know, it's been recommended that the animal products and like poultry meat that I really need to be mindful of consumption. There are, you know, chemicals, minerals, traces of things that in there that there I could be responding to my body, okay. you know, internal inflammation, you are what you eat. So I'm now kind of exploring going moving in that direction. You so. are what you eat. I like Correct. That. Your body is the temple. Food is medicine. You're all, you are what you eat and when you eat. Yeah. You are what you eat and when yes. you eat. Think I about like it. That. It's true. Oh, there is something I, uh, another thing I need to say about depression. Sure. Um, when I talk about my uh, success story of getting off my medicine and uh, like becoming a happy person, I never, ever, ever want to undermine or marginalize people still struggling. A lot of people have it a lot worse than I ever have, and that is not nothing, and it will never be nothing. And, I mean, it's important to be supportive, to be understanding, and not to assume that you know the answers to other people's issues when you don't. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Well, well said. All right. With that, you know, I think it's about that time. The show has uh, almost come to an end. But before that, I'd like to thank you, Jason Flowers, for coming on. You're, you're really a great, uh, great asset to the show. Again, honored. Thank you and, so much. Uh, I'd love to have you back on because I'm sure, I'm <laughs> sure the audience loves to hear what you have to say. And my lovely friend, uh, Jules, beautiful beauty queen, Jules, <laughs> aqua lady. Thank you for coming on. You're such a lovely uh, delight. No, uh, thank course, you. my good friend, Will, thank you for joining us. Ian Bamberger, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, we're so lucky to have Ian with us on the show every week. And by the way, folks, uh, starting April 6th, we will be broadcasting on Saturday uh, from 1.30 to 2 p.m. on The Answer, AM 970, The Answer, Chirp About It Live with Pat Sample, uh, starting April 6th. 
and of course Jade who keeps things together thank you very much Jade and of course my lovely lovely audience thank you very much for tuning in uh, we're going to wrap it up with Mr. Ian Bamberger till next week Tuesday same time same place City World Radio Network Trump about it live Pat Saber we're out dogs for people who are blind or visually impaired, one national organization is taking the lead. The Guide Dog Foundation breeds and trains Labradors and Golden Retrievers to help blind and visually impaired people increase their mobility and independence. The foundation provides transportation to its New York campus, the Guide Dog, a comprehensive training program, and a lifetime of aftercare services, all free of charge. The benefits to training with a guide dog at the Guide Dog Foundation in Smithtown, New York, are many. Among them are small class sizes for personalized attention, a long history of excellence in dog breeding, and a highly skilled professional training staff. The foundation offers a comfortable environment and diverse training areas from country walks to city subways. If you or someone you know could benefit from the foundation's free services, call 800-548-4337. We all want our kids to grow up safe and healthy, so we show them how, and we tell them with honest conversations that let them know what we expect. That's especially important when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. Kids need to know the dangers and how to avoid them. And when it comes to pain medications, opioids, they need to know that they should never be taken without a prescription and never shared with friends or family. It's dangerous and illegal, so talk with your kids, because when you talk, they hear you. For dinner? Sure. I've been meaning to ask you, what would happen if someone offered you a drink? Grandma! If anyone ever does, I want you to say, no, I have too much respect for my family and I don't want to get in trouble. I promise, Grandma. They really do hear you. For tips on what to say, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. That's underagedrinking.samhsa.gov. This message brought to you.